Peggy 16. Hi, I'm Matt Kizminski, art director on Dawn of War 3. Hi, I'm Tristan Brett, the lead environment artist on Dawn of War 3. Today we're going to take you through some of the environments that we've created for the game. Cypress Ultima is our medieval world that expresses the sort of way of life or the style of life that people of the 41st millennium uh, experience. There's also a number of little details that we did as well. There's little um, nooks and crannies of things and stuff in the um, non-playable spaces that kind of draw your eye a little bit, not too much that it competes with gameplay, but enough that you sort of see little corners of the map that make you go, oh, well, that's cool, that's neat, that's, I mean, that, I want to know more about that, what's going on there. And so that was a, that was a big part of making uh, maps that people wanted to come back to over and over again. The natural rock sets were, were designed in a way that the artist had a lot of freedom to, to create some, some unique rock formations. The walls and structures were designed to, um, in a modular way so they could tile vertically and horizontally to allow us to create a lot of different unique layouts. Um, you know, gave the designers a lot, of, a lot of freedom to create a variety of spaces. The whole intent around Cage World was to create something very alien and very disorienting. And also, for me, I wanted to do something that players had never really seen in a Donald War game before, something very, very unique. Derived from the idea that you could build a world out of sort of interconnecting blocks of almost living metal, so to speak. The desire to like revisit the worlds was something that was really important to me, and it was something that um, I put to as a challenge to the environment team. Like, how can we create these worlds so that when I look at them, they still feel very 40K, they feel like um, an expression of what we've seen in the paintings, what we've seen in the tabletop, what we've seen um, even in our previous games, but do it in a way that makes the player feel like, hey, I can come back to this place, and there's sort of something appealing about it, there's something intriguing, and then there's a touch of mystery, but that I can also, you know, see the action, I can see the battle taking place. So Starfort, it's a rather new tile set in the Dawn of War franchise uh, with some of our technology, you know, with, with Alpha Terrain, it basically unstrapped us from the ground and, and let us do something that, you know, in space or in, in low orbit. And the, the architecture is sort of a, a nod to the gothic kind of grim dark uh, direction, but it's also sort of fresh in, the, in that it's a giant space station or, or a giant war machine that, that you're playing on. So just having that sense that, you know, you're, you're fighting on, on this big uh, battle barge type of map um, was really exciting. The, the sheer scale of them and the size of the weaponry on display on them, they are the sort of ultimate expression of Imperium technology. From an engineering and, and design standpoint, you know, how, how would these structures be built? How, you know, how thick do the walls need to be to support a 300-foot uh, cathedral, for example, and how all the different pieces of the Star Fort need, need to fit together and, and feel mechanically convincing and feel that, yeah, this structure could actually um, support a whole army on it in, in space. We're really facilitating gameplay, so the way I look at maps a lot of time is just it's a canvas for the units and, and the gameplay. Uh, so, you know, the, the clean areas are, are really to help frame the units. Where there's no gameplay, that, that's the area where we sort of do some of our storytelling. Acheron is the most violent world that we have. It, it's, there's lava spewing everywhere. There's these ever-shifting glaciers of ice that uh, are moving across the surface and they're perpetually collapsing into the, um, into the volcanic action beneath it. But we wanted something that was that had an element of beauty to it. That was, when I look at it, I'm like, wow, that, that looks really, really cool. I, I don't want to go on a vacation there, but there's something neat about escaping into that world, and that was part of the challenge, and part of it was creating like this, those color palettes that would invite you in. And that is a very iterative process. That is constantly going back, saying like, well, right now it looks too friendly and it looks too happy. How can we make that feel a bit darker? As a player, I find myself trying to parse out the details and try to parse out what was gameplay and what was um, just visual noise and what was just, you know, decoration in the maps. So a lot of it was like, okay, hold on, let's think about what we need, 
what we really need to convey this world, to frame the action, and take people to some place really interesting and cool. So there you have it, some of the environments you're going to be seeing in Dawn of War 3. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait for you guys to play the game.